So for this lab, um, you have, what, 10 days to do it. You have to create a video, okay? Oh, you got an email saying your lab kit was shipped? Um, anybody else get an email saying that their lab kit was shipped? Okay, so uh, that's why I was saying if you want to pick it up, although there's a checkbox, right? Did you check the box that said, um, I want it mailed to me? Oh, okay. I did. So, so, okay, that's fine then. I guess they were, they're a little bit ahead of time then in uh, um, processing because they said they would be ready by the 8th. So, oh, you're far away. Okay. So, it, it'll probably take a couple of days then, Chase. Um, but it's good though. I mean, at least, at least I sent it out for you. But to build the equipment, you're going to build two items. Uh, one item is called an electrophorus. And um, it's something you charge up and you're going to um, demonstrate its properties and the properties of the charge. So Vincent, um, yeah, any, any time after the 8th, you can go pick it up. Oh, really? Okay, see, the, see, they told me something else. They told me regarding the uh, lab kits, they told me after the 8th, but my guess is they're, they're a little bit ahead of time. So if you can pick it up now, go pick it up then. It's, you know, if you have time to go get it, go ahead and go get it. Okay. So, the electrophorus um, is a device. It works, and, and I'm not going to tell you about it now. It works by the concept of charging by induction. And we're going to talk some more about this next week. We'll talk about uh, uh, some properties of charge next week because we'll start the new unit next Thursday. Okay. So all it is is a metal plate with an insulating handle. And you're going to build one for me. Okay. So let me show you my, my version. And I, in the, uh, in the lab itself, oops, you know what? I forgot. I, I forgot to change the view. Sorry about that. I always forget that. Okay. So it's an insulating handle with a metal plate. By the way, if I ever do it, I can just blurt it out. Okay. Because sometimes I'll do this. I can do it for five minutes and... And uh, without me knowing or remembering, okay. So blurt it out if I didn't change the view on the camera. Thank you, Professor. Yeah. So do we record this session? I'm recording it. Oh, you mean the? the I'm, I'm not sure I understood your question. Like, do you record this on uh, Zoom? This is record. Oh yeah, I didn't hit record, did I? I had it. I had pause. I'm sorry. This meeting is being recorded. I paused, I paused the Zoom recording because I was setting things up. But um, the other video, it was never paused. So that'll be on YouTube. Okay. Sorry about it. Thanks for reminding me. Okay. Um, I'll make sure the, 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 one, the, the, the meeting at 930. You can always watch the one at 930 on YouTube. So um, let me show you what my version looks like. Okay, let me show you how complex 
this device is. It's not complex. I'm just kidding. Okay. This is a homemade electrophorus. Paper cup, paper plate, and aluminum foil. That's all it is. Okay? So you got to make one of these. But you not only got to make one of these, you have to show me that it works. So the video you're going to create, you'll, you'll make one of these and uh, show that it, and demonstrate that it works. And I'll show you that this thing works, okay? That it's a device that you can charge up and you can show the charge on here. You can demonstrate it on here. I'll show you in a little bit, okay? Now, you do not have to build one like this. There are variations you can make. One second. Okay. There are variations you can make. You can, although this version didn't work, you can get like a cake pan and glue a cup to it. Now, for me, this didn't work because this is a, this is a pie pan from a pie I got at Nugget. I, and I think there's a coating on here. There's actually a, some sort of coating on here. So when I tried to charge this up, it didn't work. So if you use something like this, like from a, from a pie, you might have to sand this down. Okay. However, if you buy those cake pans, you know those baking pans that are made out of aluminum? Those, those probably will work well because there's no coating on them, it's just aluminum. Okay, but this one seems to have some sort of coating on it. I couldn't get this one to work. This simple one with the paper plate and the aluminum foil wrapped around it and with the handle, this worked great. Okay, and I'll demonstrate this thing for you guys. Um, so, so um, and you can test it a number of ways. Okay, if you have a fluorescent bulb, not a big one, but a small one, um, you can test it to test to see that you can charge this by put, putting, putting charge on this by taking the bulb. And I haven't tried this because I don't have a big, I don't have a small fluorescent bulb in my house. And bringing the fluorescent bulb and touching the metal part of the plate. And if it flickers, then you know it works. Okay. I got to talk about how to charge this and I got to talk about um, how to test it in a little bit. Okay. So this is a pretty simple device. Um, do you guys hear the chainsaws? Okay. Sorry about that. The other device you're going to build is called an electroscope. It's, it's a device used to detect and qualitatively Measure charge. And I'm gonna, I'll show you a close-up of it in a little bit. I, I'll, I'll, uh, um, I was worried last night because I didn't have one built and it took me five minutes to make this. So basically all it is, is a jar. A clear jar. It's got to be clear because you're going to film it. Okay. A metal piece, I'll bring it up closer, okay, so it's, oops, wrong way, a metal piece and a lid, I used a paper plate for a lid, I didn't have a flat paper plate, so I used this bowl, and then uh, on, the, on the metal piece, I put an aluminum ball, underneath, I had two leaves, 
made a, basically it's one, one strip of aluminum that I folded in half, okay? It's one strip of aluminum, I folded it in half and put it over so it hangs like that. Let me do this for you. I'm gonna change, I have, I have multiple cameras. I'm gonna change cameras so you can get a close up view of this. Okay. So just give me a second. I'm gonna pause one of my videos. So you won't see this on Zoom. Uh, oh no, you will see it on Zoom. Okay, so here is the device. There's the, the two pieces of foil. Those two pieces of foil that you see in there are used to detect the charge. Okay, and then let me take this out of the jar. So you can see it more clearly. There's the little hanger. Basically that piece of metal just came from a coat hanger. Okay, that piece of metal that I'm using that goes through the, um, hold on a second. Let me take the top ball off. I won't take it off, I guess. But this is just a, uh, from a coat hanger. Okay, that's all it is, just from a coat hanger. Let me put this back into place. The leaves, oops, they fell off. They're used to charge. And when you bring something charged near the aluminum ball, the leaves will deflect. The more they deflect, that's indicative of more charge that you have. Ideally, those aluminum gold leaves are supposed to be made of gold, thin pieces of, uh, thin uh, sheets of gold. We don't have that. Most of us don't have sheets of gold. So um, we're going to use aluminum foil. Those little leaves of aluminum foil have to be thin. Don't use... Don't use um, heavy aluminum foil. Use the, the best thing to use for this is the cheapest aluminum foil you can find. Because typically when you buy the cheap aluminum foil at the store, it's really thin. Okay, the thinner the better because then the, 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 those leaves are lighter. You want them to be light so that the charge affects it. Okay, let me go switch back. Uh, professor, does the coat hanger part, does that have to be made of metal? Yeah, because the, um, when you put charge on, when you bring charge near the top by that ball, the, uh, you have to have conduction all the way to the leaves. So that piece has to be made out of metal. Oh, okay. Um, would a paper clip work or does it need to be something a little bit bigger? You can try a paper clip. I mean, I, I, I didn't think about that. You're probably going to need a big paper clip. Sorry, let me adjust the camera somehow that's changed. Somehow the picture's not as bright as it was before. Okay. Can you guys see that okay? Okay. For some reason, it just seems a little bit dark. 
All right. So yeah, um, and in fact, if you use a coat hanger to, uh, if you use a coat hanger to make that for that rock, for that little piece of metal, um, you want to make sure you sand it down because sometimes the coat hangers have a coating on them. The metal on the coat hangers will have a coating on them. So um, you're going to want to um, sand them down so you can remove that coating. Okay. So basically all I did was I took a, a coat hanger, cut a piece off and I made, and I just bent it like this. Then I put the aluminum foil. So it just is suspended like this. This is a side view. That's sir. Question? Uh, I have a coat hanger right now. Could I like show you? And like, could you tell me if it has like a coating on it? Because I'm not really sure what that would look like. Is it like kind of bronzish? It's a bra it's a it's a uh Kind of a, a bronze colored one yeah mm -hmm. it's hard for me to tell on the video okay. so right. what i would do if i were you is just to be on the safe side just get some sandpaper and just i mean it'll take like a few seconds just take some sandpaper and uh, run the sandpaper over it okay just to make sure you have conduction you need to have have you need to be able to have electrical conduction okay thank you okay Professor? Yeah. To sand the coat hanger, can we use that um, that uh, scotch right scrub which comes for the utensils or does like does that work to sand it? Like can that have like help in any way? Scotch bright. Um, it might be a very slow process. And okay. I, I don't yeah, I don't know how thick how thick um uh, the coating, you know, it, it, it all depends on the coat hanger. So the one I had, I, I think was not coated, but I just, just in case I actually sanded it down. Cause it takes, it takes very little time. And I mean, if you, the sandpaper you can get from Home Depot, they, they're not very expensive, but um, most people will have something laying around. I mean, you can try, you can try the, um, yeah, the Scot Scotch-Brite pads, might take a long time. If you just get a, a sheet of sandpaper, it'll, it'll get it, especially if it's rough, it'll get it done real quick. Okay. And for like, so the jar is basically to hang the, um, like this coat hanger and the aluminum leaves, right? And then to isolate it too. You want to isolate the leaves. Okay, so from if the like, if like we had a wooden stand and we used that wooden stand to hang it, but we didn't have any jar, then it wouldn't work. What about a glass? A drinking glass? Oh, no, I'm just saying that if like, would it work even if we did not contain the leaves? Um, yeah, it would, but you're just more subject to outside, you know, somebody walks by or because the leaves are light, if you, if you bring something real close to it, like let, let's say I, I took this object and I just went like this, the wind that that produces by the leaves are gonna cause the leaves to move. Oh, okay, so there are like more variations then. Yeah, there's a lot of variations. So you, you can, I mean, we have one in the department that's not, you know, it's not enclosed and it's basically, uh, a circle, this thing is grounded, you have a metal plate that goes to a ball, and then there's a rod which will rotate. And this is not enclosed at all. But of course, this rod is not going to be subject to outside influences as much as the leaves. Because right? this rod's heavier. Yeah. And the leaves mm -hmm. are very light. That's why, that's why you want it to be, in, uh, you, ideally you want it to be inside a container. Okay. Yeah, and just, just, just as a reminder, it doesn't have to be a jar. I mean, it could be a, it could be a glass, but it has to be clear so you, you can see it, so that you can film it. Okay. Yeah. All right. 
So let me talk about how to test these. This thing works by something called charging by induction. So what you have to do, you need to charge the surface first of all. And this might be the hard part. I think the best way to do this, um, well, I'll tell you how we do it in the department. When, you, when, the, when, the, when, the, uh, when we do the, this lab in the department, uh, we have something like this, but it's actually a, a real metal plate with a wooden handle, okay? Not like this. But then we have a piece of wax a slab of wax on the table and you take some fur and you rub it you rub the wax okay so you take the fur and rub the wax and then you take the um, where did my electrophorus go you take the electrophorus and you put it on top of the wax The ball on the electroscope was just uh, aluminum foil that I crumbled up, Chase. So you do something like this, and then what you do is with one finger on the metal part here, the, you take a, a finger of your other hand and touch ground. And that will transfer charge to this. So again, I'll say it again. You take one finger from one hand, touch the, the metal on the electrophorus. With your other hand, you want to touch ground, something that's grounded like a pipe. Now, I'm in, I'm in a, I don't have any pipes that are exposed, so I'm going to, I have a lamp, although it's not grounded, just to illustrate to you how it works, okay? But most of us don't have a slab of wax to charge. Okay, so there's different, different things you can use. You can use styrofoam. So I didn't have a piece of styrofoam. All right, I didn't have, you know, a nice slab of styrofoam, but I do have a styrofoam cooler. And what I can do is charge the styrofoam cooler with fur. You're going to get fur in your kit. Okay, it doesn't have to be fur. I tried this last night. If he had wool, wool will work too. And you just rub the styrofoam. So I'm going to change, I'm going to move my camera a little bit because I'm going to show you what I'm going to be doing to charge this. Wrong way. Um, darn, I can't, I can't. I need to go the other way. They won't let me. Let me see if I can move this. I have a desk lamp that's plugged in. Can you guys see the desk lamp? Barely. This is the top of the desk, the desk lamp. Okay, what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to take my styrofoam cooler and I'm going to rub it vigorously with the fur. My piece of fur is kind of cheesy. Yours will be better. So I'll rub it vigorously. Then I'm going to take this, put it on top, and then with one finger in each hand, I'm going to charge him. Let me see if I did a good job charging it. No, I didn't. Let me do one more. Sometimes this takes multiple tries. It was working great last night. Did you hear the static charge? Okay. You heard that? So it, it char you can tell it charged. If you heard that static, that static -y sound, that you know it got charged up. In fact, let me try it again. You heard that? 
Okay, so this, so you can tell it got charged up. Okay. Now, one thing you can do is, and I may have to change views. We'll try this. Actually, I'll do this. To see that it works, you can take another strip of, of aluminum foil and see if this has an effect on it. So let me, let me try this. I'm going to charge it up one more time. And I take a piece of aluminum foil and see if the electrophorus has an effect on the aluminum foil. Do you see the attraction? So you can tell it's charged. Okay, you can easily tell it's charged. That's how you want to prove that it's charged. You want to charge it by induction. So what I did is I charged it by induction. I didn't charge it by directly touching this. All I did was I put this on top of my charged styrofoam cooler. One hand was on the metal here. The other hand was on ground. And then I let electrons go from ground into the plate to charge this. That's charging by induction. And then when I took this and brought it near some metal object, you saw a force of attra attraction. still charged on here, I guess. You, I saw a, a force of attraction. And that indicates that it's working. So you're going to create, you're, you're, you're not writing a formal lab report. All you're doing is making a video showing me that you built this and showing me that it works. By the way, um, one thing I did with this plate, I had extra aluminum foil and I made a pointy side on it. I don't know if you can see it. Electric fields are greatest near the pointy side, so you, you would notice the effects to be strongest on this end. That's why I did that. Okay. So if you want to make the effects easier to see, you might want to make something like this. Okay, make, it, make your electrophorus pointy on one end. Are there any questions about this? I have a question. Uh, um, go ahead. Uh, let me answer one question on, uh, that Chase had. Chase, you know, you can try this, the scent of candle wax. Is it a flat, um, is it pretty flat? Um, I glued this. This is glued, it's the reason why it's blue, I just use PVC pipe, uh, PVC glue. It doesn't work on metal. Okay. But yeah, you just gotta, you just glue it together. Except for, I mean, the, the aluminum foil, I just wrapped it over. Rafta, you had a, go ahead, you had a question? Yeah, I was saying that um, when you put one finger on the foil and one on the lamp, um, would you still have to do it if you were not wearing shoes? Or sandals or whatever? Yeah, I would do it just to be in the same, I mean, just to ensure it. Okay, so yeah. because you want to earth yourself, right? You, I'm sorry, say that again? You want to earth yourself by doing that? Yeah, you want to earth yourself, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it depends, I mean, your, your, your connection to ground, uh, whether you have shoes or not, is kind of iffy. I mean, uh, even when you have shoes on, uh, if, if, you, if you're by a Van de Graaff, uh, and you touch a Van de Graaff that's charged, the shoes are not going to do anything for you because the, the, the Van de Graaff has a lot of charge on it. Mm -hmm. Um, question regarding a lamp. I use the lamp because I don't have a pipe in my room because I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in uh, I'm not like in the garage or anything. So uh, if you were in the garage doing it, I would, I would use a pipe. The pipe is probably the best because the pipe is earth. It goes into the earth. Okay. You want to use a pipe or, or a water faucet. All right. The water faucet, the pipes go into the ground. This one does not because I'm, I'm kind of stuck in here, although it did work. 
right? Because I and I and my feet are kind of touching ground, so um, I'm not I'm not that well insulated. But ideally, to make things work better, you want to touch a pipe that goes into the earth. So uh, water pipe, like on your faucet. So can I run this through with you again, like the entire process? Well, not yeah. the entire process, just the one that was with the um, the plate and the cup. You want to run this? Go ahead and run. I just to know if I have it right. So like, will you set up the thing, like you build it, then you charge it using the um, styrofoam or whatever you have, and then you ground it? You ground it? After charging it? Yeah, well, that's by grounding it, that's you're charging it. Okay. Wait, so it's either or? We're either touching the foil and touching like a pipe, or we're charging it with a styrofoam? You're not charging with the styrofoam. That's, that's, a, that's a misunderstanding. Yeah, the, the Zoom, by the way, the Zoom meeting will be uploaded. The, the, if you use wax or styrofoam, the process is the same. So let me, let me go through the process again. You use wax or styrofoam. Or if you don't have either, you can actually use saran wrap. Well, saran wrap is kind of a pain to work with. You can lie a sheet of saran wrap on a table and do it. And I've gotten that to work. It doesn't work as well. This works a little bit better. Okay, and you know, when I did this last semester, my students got creative. They tried all kind of things. They tried uh, styrofoam. They tried saran wrap, or even a transparency. Or if you have a big sheet of rubber. Okay, if you have a big, if you have a, if you have a square sheet of rubber, the process is exactly the same. Okay. You rub this like that. You then take the, the electrophorus, put it on your surface. Then I got to, I, I want to put this whole thing down. So one finger of each hand, one goes to the plate and one goes to the um, lamp or your pipe. And then you pick it up. And this thing is charged. That's it. That's all you got to do. And there's dozens of videos on this online. Dozens. And they make better versions of this. Okay. So and I have I, I, in, in the file, I have several links on this. So this is called charging by induction. It's a demonstration of charging by induction. And once you have this built, then the following week you can do the lab and you're going to do some testing with these devices. So let me show you the um, electroscope, how this one works. I, and what I got to do, I'm going to have to change cameras again because this is so small, it's hard to see. Okay. So again, it's just a jar, a hanger. A coat hanger, or just a piece of a coat hanger. And again, I have links in the file for the lab that tells you how to build it, them. It doesn't have to be built this way. You can, you can vary it, okay? Aluminum foil as your leaves. These are called the leaves. Normally, traditionally, these are gold. But most of us don't have gold leaves, okay? And they're really thin. They want them to be as light as possible. And then you have... A lid, my lid's a, a bowl, but if you have a flat paper plate, it's probably better. And then I just took a piece of aluminum foil and crumpled it up over the hanger of this shape. So basically what I did is this. I just crumpled it up like that. And then this whole thing goes in a jar. And the jar has to be clear so you can film it. Okay, so let me switch cameras, and I'm going to do something a little bit different. So when I switch cameras, I'm going to be using a different microphone because I don't have enough USB uh, ports on this thing.
can't hear me. Okay, just one second. Let me make this slightly bigger. So now you can see two cameras. All right. We need just one camera. So I need to prove that this thing works. And to be honest, it's not going to work great. The, ele the electroscope, uh, yeah, it's used to qualitatively uh, measure charge. So the more charge you have, the more the leaves will spread out when you bring something near it. Because we're not using gold leaves and that aluminum foil is a little stiff, it might be a little bit difficult for that to work. So I need to demonstrate that it works. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a charged rod. This does not always work well. I'm going to put it, I'm going to get a rod which comes in your kit, and I'm going to charge it up and bring it here near the surface. So if this is negatively charged, the electrons in the aluminum ball do not like similar electrons, they're going to run away towards the bottom. That's going to make the leaves at the bottom negatively charged, and of course, like charges repel, and they're going to come apart. So, what I'm going to do is I have a PVC rod. And if it doesn't work, I actually have a better, if this doesn't work, I have a better way to do this. Okay. And it always works when I do it the other way. So this is a PVC rod that comes, it's going to come in your kit. Okay? And you'll have a nice piece of fur, not this thing. This thing's pretty bad. Although the fur that we got this semester is better than we had last semester. Last semester, the fur would come right off right away. And students were all full of fur when they did this experiment. Can you hear the, uh, the static as I charge this. So basically what I'm doing is this. Okay. Let me come by. So take a look at the other camera. You see the gold leaf, I mean the, the aluminum leaves moving? You see them moving? Slightly? Yeah. Okay. And one more time. Sometimes it doesn't work because I don't get good enough charge. So when you videotape it, I got to be able to see that. So you can see, although they're moving, they're not really deflect. Oh, they are deflecting. Okay. Okay. So it is working. What do you think would be a, a, my other way to prove this that it works? So you're using a, a PVC rod and you're bringing that close to the aluminum foil? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so let me, let me, let me just show you a different view of what I'm doing. It was hard to see from that camera. So what I'm doing is I charge this up and I just put it right over it. I don't touch it. I just hover it over it. And they separate. Okay. If I, had a, if I had a camera person, it would be nice to get easier to switch cameras. But Okay, now what would be another way to do this for me to prove it? Oh, my foil fell off. Hold on a second. I got to repair my electroscope. My foil fell off. Uh... By the way, with the electroscope, my, my leaves, the leaves I used we're very thin and narrow. I don't know if you can see that. You can you can experiment with different size leaves. 
You should, you know, try to have fun with it. You guys are going to be scientists and engineers. You should be, you should be experimenting with different kind of things. Change the width, the 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 the, the, the height, the length of it, etc. I, I found that if it's longer, it works better. So, what would be another way for me to test if the electroscope works? In fact, I can do a test where both where I can demonstrate that both the electroscope and the electrophorus works. Can I just bring this over the electroscope? Because aren't, aren't I supposed to prove that this is charged? And aren't, aren't I supposed to prove that the other device picks up charge, detects charge? So I can charge this up and then bring it over the ball to see if it deflects. That'll always work. If you, get, if you charge this up well, the leaves will separate very nicely, much better than the PVC rod. But you should also show that it works with the PVC rod. And the reason why is because when you do the experiment next week, the following week, you're going to be doing it with the PVC rod in the, in the fur. Okay? So you need to make sure that it works with these items. But... If you are having difficulty making it work with these items, use this at least to prove that it kind of works. I had some students last semester who, uh, when they created the video, it was very difficult for, for me to see that it works. And now when I grade this, part of your grade, uh, there's a rubric, part of your grade is, can I see that it works? I need to be able to see it. Okay, so when you video it, you got to make sure that the person watching can see the leaves deflecting. Okay. If you're testing this, you want to make me see that it's working. And there's a lot of, like I said, there's a lot of different ways you can show that it works. Okay. If this works real well, I would actually take a fluorescent ball and bring it, bring it up to it, and touch the the ends of the fluorescent ball. And if it flickers, then you know this thing works. Any questions? I have a question. Um, so for the video, do you want us to show the process of making as well or just the working of it? Just the working. I don't want to see the process. By the way, Chase, you're right with your comment regarding electrophorus. Yeah, the electrophorus can be used to show that the electroscope works, but I also, you should also do it with the PVC pipe. Because for the PVC pipe, you're gonna be using that the following week. So yeah, yeah, Ralph Tess, you don't, um, don't show me that, how you made it. I mean, for, for this lab, I just want to see the end product and that it works. I want the, really I want the video to be short. Can there be cuts in the video? Yeah, you can make cuts in the video. Uh, and, it, and it doesn't have to be a single video. It can be two videos. Hold on, let me, let me, let me change the, I forgot. There it is there. Uh, you can, can, you guys can hear me okay, right? Because I'm not, uh, I'm using a different microphone right now. Yeah. Does it sound more like, um, no, uh, the sound is different though, right? Okay. It sounds fine. Okay, okay, good. So I'm using the microphone from the computers instead of the one that's up here. Um, I already lost my point. So, um, the, the video, let me say something about the video, and I'll tell you about the rubric. Okay. You want to, um, I don't want to download your video, and the video doesn't have to be long. You can make it in two separate videos, one for the electroscope and one for the electrophorus. I just need the links to the video. Okay. Um, you can film the video and upload it to YouTube. So what you want to do is create a YouTube account. I'm going to, I'm going to look for my... Just give me a second. My YouTube channel. I'm not, I, and I'm not doing this just to advertise. But I 
Give me a second to find a channel. And let me Okay, so this is my YouTube channel, which has my lectures from even from last spring on here. And so you want to go to YouTube and create an account with your own channel. Okay. And then um, once you've done that, you can click this button up here to upload videos. I don't know why that's so slow. So you select your file, or you can drag the file here. So just for fun, let me, let me do a video that's, I'm probably gonna have to delete eventually. Uh, That's not what I want. I don't know why this is so slow. Let me go find a video. Hold on a second. Okay, let me just just upload this video so you can see. Okay, so then uh, when you're uploading the video, you, you can put a description or, or whatever there. And if you want to make a playlist, whatever. Then you hit next, and then it asks, is it made for kids? Say yes. And then you hit next. I'll hit next again. I'm going to get to the important part. You're probably going to want to make it private, because I don't know if you want the whole world to see it. So you click private, and then uh, you hit save, and it'll upload the video. But then when it's done, you'll have a link to the video. You've got to email me the link. Okay? I'm going to cancel that because I don't want to upload the same file again. Does that all make sense? Uh-oh. Would you want to do uh, unlisted? Or, or will, um, will you still be able to watch the, the private one? It, um... You can do it unlisted. In fact, yeah, it's probably better. Make it unlisted. But then send me the link. Okay? Can we okay. put the link as an assignment submission rather than emailing you? Sure. That's actually better. Okay, because then you will have to scroll through the links, like find everyone's link. Yeah, you're right. I mean, that's probably a smarter thing to do is just um, upload the link because then when I'm in the speed grader in Canvas, then I just click on the link and grade at the same time. So up uploading the link is better. So do that. Okay? Okay. Yeah, upload the link. Sorry, I, I, I should have said, that's what I should have said. Um, so let me go into Canvas. And... I want to go into the student mode. I was going to do this last night, but I didn't have a chance. So let me go into the student view. So this is the student view. This is, I think, what you guys see. You see this thing that says studio? Mm -hmm. You click on it.
you have Canvas Studio. Up here, you can record a video from your webcam with Canvas Studio. Okay? So if you click, I'm not going to do it here, because I don't know what will happen. But you can either click on it or add a video. So you don't have to, you don't have to send it to YouTube. You can actually put it in Canvas Studio and then share it with me. And that'll work fine too. Is that okay? Yeah, if we use the studio, then you would not have to download the video. Yes. It, it just, it, it depends on, right, it depends on um, what you, you know, are you using the, are you using the camera on your computer, right? I mean, you, the question is, are you using the camera on your computer or uh, are you using a separate camera? Like in my case, I have a separate camera. I'm, I'm not really using cameras on my computer like right now to uh, to, to uh, display myself. I have a camera that attaches the computer to the computer, and I have camera software that collects it. So it's you know it's up to you how you want to do it. So you can do it either way. I just do not want to upload a one gigabyte file, or I'm sorry, not upload, download a one gigabyte file. That's what happened. Uh, last semester, some students, what they would do is they would do the experiment as they were filming. So, so they were doing it like the first time. Okay. So, the first time they tried the experiment was when they were filming it. That's not what you want to do. You want to make it. You want to make everything work first, and then videotape it. That'll make your video shorter. It'll make it easier for me to see. I can grade it faster. Okay? Because I, I, I did have one that was 40 minutes long last semester. Thank goodness with videos you can just you know, go through the and just go through the important parts. Okay? So that's just lack of preparation. And I, there was one lab, like the property you know, the multimeter one. I had a student who filmed it. And he, I think he had a lot of practice at it. And he did, you know, he would cut, he, he would do a part, stop the camera, do a part, stop the camera. His video was three minutes long. And he added all kind of fancy stuff to it. I don't expect that. But I also don't want to see an extremely long video where you're doing everything for the first time. Okay. This should be a very short video. So what am I looking for in the video? What's my rubric? And I list it in the lab itself. So I'm going to write it down up here. Um, just so we're all clear. Again, I need to erase my board. I have so much stuff around here. I need things. Okay. So. Question number one, my rubric. And the rubric is listed when you on the assignment. When you go to the assignment page. Okay. So one more one. Did the student? Upload video to YouTube. or Canvas Studio. Okay, this is this is worth four points. So you know I always mention YouTube because everybody knows what YouTube is, but there's other other uh, resources, right? I think there's one called Vimeo. I forgot the other ones are called, but YouTube is I think Vimeo has a limit to like 500 megabytes or something before you have to pay. Okay, that's why I choose, that's why I always mention this. There's other there's other resources that you can use, other places that can hold the videos for you to, for us to watch. In Canvas Studio, we pay for it, so you can use that too. Okay, so this is worth four points. Um. 
Did the students build the trough first? Everything on here is listed as four points. Um, did the student clearly demonstrate that the electrophorus works? as described in step two. Okay, that's also what four points. Did the student build the electroscope? obvious that it's the leaves are moving electroscope and then you clearly demonstrate that it worked according to what it said in step two. And the reason why I say this because some students watch a video on, online where, the, where the, this one guy tests the electroscope just by touching the electroscope. And, and I don't... Um, what, what some people did in testing electroscope, they would charge it and then they would bring their hand down and they would listen for the zap and say, oh, it works. That's not what I want you guys to do. I want you to be able to pick it up and, and see if there's charge on here. Okay? The reason why, you know, if you, if you have it on here, the, the styrofoam is already charged. So if I touch, if I touch this, I'm gonna get I'm gonna I'm gonna get shot because the two are in contact. I want to know if charge was transferred onto this. So you need to be able to pick this up and bring it near something to show to me that it's charged. But if you do what, what's done in the videos on YouTube, you're not going to get full credit for this part. I'm telling you that now, okay? That really doesn't show anything. Sometimes some of the stuff on YouTube is uh, not that good. So that was one that bothered me. Because I, I can tell students did, did, did that because I saw the video of the guy. Uh, there's several people who do it that way. That's really not the best way to test if this thing works. You actually want to pick it up. In fact, when you pick it up, you're actually doing work on the system and you're storing energy. And that, so it'll work more effectively. Questions? <laughs> Um, can we do steps three and five uh, both in one go by by testing the um, what's it called the electrophorus on the um, electroscope? I mean, you can test. So I would say that would be a good test of this. So you can do that, but you also, you know, again, you're going to be doing you're going to be using this equipment for the properties of charge lab. You need to be able to make sure that it works with the rod, like I showed you. So I want to see that too. Oh, okay. Okay? I need to see that too. Because otherwise, if, if we don't know that it's going to work with uh, the PVC rod, then how do we know you're, not, you're going to be stuck when it comes to doing the experiment? Right? I'm trying to put, yeah. we're trying to put you in a position to succeed in the next lab, which is called the property of the charge. 
where in that lab, you're going to be demonstrating things, and in the video you're creating, you will be explaining what you see. So for this lab, you're building the equipment. For the subsequent lab, you're going to demonstrate and explain. But that should be longer. In this one, do we have to, like, talk? Or can it just be silent? I'm sorry? Do we have to, like, say stuff in the video? Or you just want us to show you that it worked? Yeah, for this one, you, you probably don't need to say anything. Alright, Okay, you don't have to. But the next one, you have to say a lot. Okay. Okay. So, yeah, I mean, because you're just demonstrating. Anytime you're doing a demonstration, so, like, um, the multimeter quiz, when the, the, the student, I remember one student did the multimeter quiz and he did the whole thing in three minutes. He didn't say anything for the whole, no, no, he did say stuff. There was another person who did it without saying anything. What he did was, he just, he, uh, again, these are students who have, who have a lot of experience, he would actually type stuff out. So there would be words, instead of him saying stuff, there would be words typed out, saying what happened. Okay, but then, then you get to figure out how to do that. So, you know, unless you have that, you've learned that already, I wouldn't spend time trying to figure that out. How you want to? Okay. And does the rod have to be PVC or can we use some, like, some other material for it? Rubber. Could be a rubber rod. But this will be in your, this will be in your kit. Okay. I forget if it's going to be white or gray or you know, I think that's what, what Tyler got. Okay. And he just went to Home Depot and just bought a bunch of these and just cut them up. So. I was going to say one more thing and I forgot. Um, other questions? I have a question. Yeah. Um, so, how do you know which materials work together to produce a static charge? That's a good question. So when you're charging by contact, there are some materials that like to pick up electrons and there are some materials that like to give up their electrons. So you want to have two materials where one third the polar opposites of each other. You, you really don't want two materials that like to give up the electrons. So there's something called, and you can look this up online, the tribal Electric series. So fur, fur likes to give off its electrons. PVC and styrofoam likes to pick them up. Okay. So basically, the 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 the, um, the styrofoam and the PVC were making them negatively charged. How do we know that? Well, people did experiments. Okay. People did experiments to see. So if you look up this term, you'll see the list of items. Which items like to pick up electrons, which likes to give off the electrons. So you want the opposites. Okay. So for example, if you take two PVC rods and rub them together, ain't nothing's gonna happen. Okay. That is because they both want they both want electrons. They don't want to give them up. Okay. So, um, like, all this data is experimental and, like, there is no reasoning as to why one wants to pick up and the other wants to give? Well, it has to do with the structure of the molecule that makes up the material. Okay. Right, just like in chemistry, you know, uh, those of you in chemistry, the elements like chlorine, fluorine, they like picking up the extra electrons. You know, yeah, they want to like complete their octet, therefore they want the electron. Yeah, so it's basically on the properties of the molecule. The, the molecules want to pick up the electron. It's, it's not only the molecule, but then also the solid, because you got to remember, when you form a solid, the molecules are interacting with each other. Right, and so it, it's complex, right? But, you know, we don't do a calculation as to whether something wants to pick up the, a solid wants to pick up the electrons or not, because that's very difficult. Okay. 
it's easy rather so like um, instead of doing all the calculations, we just um, did the experiments, and now we know they do this. Yes. Okay. Just like with friction, we don't calculate the friction. We don't calculate what the coefficient of friction is between um, two different metals. That is a horrendous thing to do. We just measure it, and then and, and we go with that. They say we can get different values for it in different experiments with the same materials, like for the coefficient of friction. Yeah, because the smoothness of the surface varies, right? Because the friction of course depends on the smoothness of the surface. This one's a little bit, I mean, uh, this one they've come up with a, set, uh, a standard for which, a numbering system for which one is wants to pick up more electrons and which one likes to pick up, uh, give off the electrons. So there's a set of numbers they've assigned to each material. By experiment. I just got another question. Um, so, like, when you rub the PVC rod and it gets the electrons from the fur, um, so how does that then becomes neutral later on? And like, does it give away its electrons oh, how again? Does this when you well, um, I can do this with my hand, and since I'm kind of grounded, I can get rid of the electrons. But if you're talking about just leave, just taking this and putting it on a table and leaving it, what happens? Um, the charge will drain off into the atmosphere. There's moisture in the atmosphere. The water molecules actually are a little bit conductive. And so uh, eventually the charge will drain off. So is there like a limit as um, how much the PVC can be charged? Yeah, there are limitations. Okay. Yeah, there are, there are limitations. So um, it depends on the material. Yeah, and those are two different questions, I guess. It depends on the material and the geometry, which we're going to talk about a little bit later uh, in the following so if, week. Uh, if we have like a bigger, um, bigger um, size of the same material, that can be charged more. Yeah. Right? Because you have more surface area, right? Mm -hmm. Put charge. Yeah. But that's one thing. But there's another thing is um, we can talk about voltage. We haven't talked about it yet. How big of a voltage you can put on, on these things. That depends on the property of the material. Because eventually, if you put too too big a voltage on here, this thing will conduct electricity. Just like the air, you know, when when when. Uh, you hear the, when you heard the spark when I touched the electrophorus, the air was conducting there. Okay, that was ionizing the air molecules because the field was so large. Isn't it the same as the cathode ray experiment where they ionize the air and therefore the electrons travel uh, from one electrode to the other? Yeah, and, and with the cathode ray, yeah. You, uh, we got to be careful when you say the air. I mean, the the pressure is reduced by a lot inside the cathode ray tube because otherwise the electrons won't be able to go from one side to another. So yeah, whatever gas is in there, um, well, I, I got to be careful. The cathode ray tube basically you have um, a filament um, and you heat it up. The electrons come off of it, and then you use electric fields to steer it. But are, are you talking about uh, seeing a glowing color inside the tube? No, that that is just the electrons hitting the film, right? The, yes, yeah, yeah. Um, so when I read about it, they said that the air in the like whatever gas is in the tube that gets ionized because the electrons are knocked off um, from the air molecules. Yeah, I'd have, I'd have to look into that. You know, what, what I'm thinking about is in a cathode ray tube, I have a metal, I make this hot, the electrons come off it. I mean, the, the, the material gets ionized. I mean, whatever in here that is hot gets ionized. And then you force the electrons that way until you have a beam of electrons. 
Yeah, I think they talked something about the air getting ionized. Like the molecules which are present in the tube, they get ionized. And then the electrons which are released, they travel from one electrode to the other. You're talking about a cathode ray tube. Yeah, it, it is like the one which, um, the cathode ray experiment which was done. Uh, like starting when they were developing the structure of atom and all those things. Thompson's experiment? I don't think it was that. Let me see. Anyway, but but I mean, you can, you, we, can, we can talk about that offline. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Cause, cause, because I gotta run to my next, I gotta run to the next class. But yeah, we can talk mm -hmm. about that offline or, or during uh, office hours. Uh, So Chase, this is the lab lecture, and then you're gonna you're gonna do the experiment yourself. Are we okay then? I gotta run to the, I gotta run to the nine thirty group. Well, I don't have to go anywhere, but I gotta set up for the nine thirty group. Okay, you. you're welcome. So um, there's a discussion board for this. Tyler, um, he has hours on Thursday, and so he can help you with anything regarding the labs, okay? Um, and the schedule I have for tutoring is kind of limited so far, but Tyler's available today. You can ask him questions if you want to get started today, or you can ask him next Thursday, okay, if I'm not available. Okay, I better run. It's almost 9.30. I'll see you guys later.